I've been on YouTube for over 10 years. It's time to share the truth. There's an ugly truth about YouTube that not many people talk about. There's an ugly truth about YouTube that many people misunderstand. And the ugly truth about YouTube is how hard it truly is. Today's video is gonna be a little rambly, but hopefully open some eyes. Let's go for a walk. For those of you that have been watching my YouTube channel for a couple of years, you may recognize this. This is my canal. And yes, it's that time of year again where the weather is cool enough um, that I can go for a stroll and hot enough that I'm not melting. It's not June, so I'm not gonna sneeze because of hay fever. And it is a beautiful area, as you can see but it always makes me reflect. It's always this time of year that I have a motivation drop. And it's that time of year that I come to the canal to remind myself, just like I did in this video last year, the slow machine that England was is a metaphor for the growth of YouTube when it comes to certain channels. Now it can be demoralizing when you start a YouTube channel two, three, four years ago and you struggle your way to 1, 2, 10, 20, 30,000 subscribers. And then you see someone that started a YouTube channel two months ago and they're already at 20, 30,000 subscribers and they're roaring. The ugly truth about YouTube is it's all about mental strength. It's all about consistency. It's all about creating content that you like. Because if you don't like the content that you're creating, you're going to burn out. And I'll be honest, in the last couple of months, I've struggled with creativity. Now, I continue to put out content because I have a plan. I know my long-term goal. I know I want to help people to learn to grow. I know that these tutorials will help them. I know that my experience and my way of delivering things helps people, and that helps me. But from time to time, normally this time of year, I need to get out there and shake out my brain and think and breathe and inspire myself. The ugly truth about YouTube is that it's not fast. It's painful. It's slow. It takes you away from your family. It takes you away from your friends. It's something that constantly conquers your brain if you're ever going to have a successful channel. It's something that continually gnaws away at you. Do I need to publish this video? Is that video doing well? Why did that video not do well? It's something that can dominate your world. And in return, if you're willing to sacrifice some of that family time, if you're willing to sacrifice some of that personal time, if you're willing to sacrifice some of your own mental health in some cases, then you will slowly succeed. Why is this something that's rung in my head recently. I'm currently juggling a new family. I've got a, a five-year-old at home. I have a newborn at home. I have a business to continue to develop. And yes, I must admit I am blessed that I'm earning an okay wage, that I'm able to support my family and continue to work and to continue to just make YouTube videos. And I know that people are like, oh, woe is me, another YouTuber whinging, right? But it gets to a point where you have to realize human limitations and rearrange your priorities in life. But it also means from time to time, you have to allocate yourself some personal time. So this, my walk that I have every year, right, around about this time of year, I walk a lot. There's a few other canal walking videos that I'll put up in the iCard. These are things that help me reset my brain, shake out the cobwebs, hopefully refresh my brain, give me a reason, a reminder of why I create the content that I do, and to go from there. But the ugly truth about YouTube is it's like pulling teeth and you have to sacrifice a lot to do it. If you are willing to invest that time, if you're willing to invest those sacrifices, then over time, you get the ability to buy back your time and buy back elements of that life that you're hoping for. 
and I'm very, very lucky that, yeah, of course, I haven't got a nine till five. Yes, of course, I can go for a walk in a canal and chat to myself and watch the ducks as they float by, right? I have that advantage. But yes, the true sacrifice is finding two to three videos a week, optimizing two to three videos a week, mastering the art of thumbnails, mastering the art of titles, descriptions, tags, sharing them out in general, using tools like vidIQ and other things, blogging, social media influencing, outreach. There is so much that's under the underbelly of YouTube, the ugly truth that people aren't aware of. Because you sit there and you fantasize about being successful on YouTube, but you don't understand the treadmill of YouTube. And nothing's been more, this is going to be a weird one and it's an omission that nobody's seen right now. And if you're this far into this video, I love you and you get this kind of little bonus. I've started a hidden experiment. I started a second YouTube channel and not the unniched one, right? And that second channel has exploded. It's been around for about six weeks, seven weeks. It's already got 3000 subscribers. It's already got five, 6,000 hours of watch time. It's already got 400 ish thousand views. And you think that I'd be excited about that. And I am, but in return, <laughs> it's almost demoralizing that my main channel only has 32, 33,000 views, uh, sorry, 32, 33,000 subscribers and took four years to get there. Now, I know in my head, it's because they're two completely different niches. One is education and it's dry and it's boring and it's only picked up and only subscribed to when people need it, right? And the other one is much more topical right now. If you wanna learn what I'm, the new channel's all about, then hit subscribe and I'll reveal how I grew that channel to two, three, 4,000 subscribers in six weeks. Hit the subscribe button and those videos come out soon. I know that my eight years worth of knowledge on this platform, and I know that all of my hard work of honing the skills and the editing and the thumbnails and understanding titles and knowing the algorithm, I know that has certainly helped me launch this new channel. I know that, but in the back of my head, I'm like, if I can launch this channel to 3,000 subscribers in six weeks, why is the other channel the rat, 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 right? And it's an element of demoralization. When I know I'm comparing apples and giraffes, right? This is the mind fuck that is YouTube. The ugly truth that YouTube is a massive, massive energy drain, a massive mind fuck, but the risk and reward can be so huge. Many people wanna grow their YouTube channel and they even go to that naughty dark side of the world of sub bots. That's Look into that. You're struggling, your channel's small, or you're just about to hit a landmark and yet you, you just wanna get there as soon as possible. So you think, <gasps> subbots, right? What are subbots, first of all? Subbots are robotic subscribers that don't really exist, that are engineered to pump up your subscriber count. This is effectively buying YouTube subscribers that just, are there for vanity. They may make you feel good. Yay, I got my 100. Yay, I got my 1,000. Yay, I bought 10,000 subscribers. Woo, I've got a million. It may even look like you're building up momentum. There's been some channels in the past that have been known to subbot or been rumored to subbot, especially during the whole PewDiePie versus T series and things like that. There was rumors that some YouTubers couldn't hit the 10 million subscriber point, so they was just trying to jump it over there so they could get the kudos of finally hitting 10 million and getting that little button. They didn't care if it crashed back down afterwards. Some people flat out buy a load of subscribers just to pump up their brand to make them look bigger. The ugly truth about these is that subbots do nothing. They do not interact with your content. They do not engage, they do not comment, or if you do buy comments, they, they disappear very soon after. They don't watch your video after video after video, and that is the behavior that YouTube wants to see. It wants to see a, a video 
uh, history. So it knows for me recently that I've watched a lot of cinema sins and cinema wins and I've watched a lot of stand-up comedy so it then knows that me and other people like me might want to watch this video and that video. That's what YouTube needs to see from a user from engagement to then be able to push them somewhere. That's what YouTube needs to see from that user and their engagement so it can then model that user and start serving other people based on a familiar style of watch set. It needs to understand what it could serve to that person and suggest. So if you're a robot that only watches random stuff that people have bought because they've bought subbots, it's gonna confuse the algorithm based on that person and then it's never gonna serve anyone anything based on that model. Plus that bot's not gonna organically go off and watch other videos because it's not human. Therefore, it's dead. Not only does it not watch more of your content, but it doesn't watch any content or if it does, it confuses the algorithm who your audience is. In other words, you've got two, three, four, 10,000 sub bots that sit there do nothing other than drag down your overall engagement on your channel, which makes it harder for you to grow in future. It poisons your channel statistics because you'll have X amount of thousands of subscribers and none of them returning for your content dependent on anything. I get some videos that do fantastically well and I have some videos that do really badly. The reason for this is that if I talk about Facebook on here, then the YouTubers might not be engaged. If I talk about affiliate marketing, some of the YouTubers might be, but the Facebook people might not be. If I talk about my mental health, overall, maybe people don't care. But every now and then, a video will take off and it will find its audience and it will spread. I'm okay in understanding that my educational balance serves some people and doesn't serve other people, you come to find me when you have a specific need. How to add in screens, how to add subtitles, what are YouTube shorts? I answer your very specific question in that one very specific video, and then you may never come back to me ever again. But overall, I have an overarching sense of growth on YouTube or business growth online. Now, imagine if you've got all of these subbots that are sat there doing nothing, and you upload a video, and you've got 400 very, very engaged, very loyal subscribers, and you've got 10,000 subscribers, 9,600 of those are bots. YouTube goes, well, only 400 cared. Yeah. And it will take much longer for that video to maybe be reached out, if at all, to a wider audience. The ugly truth is if you're buying subscribers or if you're botting subscribers, you're actually shooting yourself in the foot. And in the long run, it could kill your channel. You're getting started and you want to throw everything you can at your YouTube channel. This is why variety channels might not work for you. Your original channel, which you still managed to grow to quite a significant audience, uh, quite a significant size you like you said yourself you kind of did it scattershot you know you're you're just kind of making stuff and uh there's movie reviews but you know yeah also uh, i'm gonna try this this new food come check it out i have a feeling w with with folks listening out there that that may resonate with them too like that's kind of how i'm doing it like i have my channel i think it's about this but sometimes i i you know turn a corner and just do something totally random uh for anybody out there resistant to this idea that you know, I have to niche down more, you know, what, what would you tell them? Like if a client was coming to you and saying, I have this channel, here's what it's doing. And you saw some promise, but you could tell like, uh Oh, you know, you're not quite focused. What, what would be, be your advice? It, it would be, it would be down to intent. I can either be brutal and say, if you want sales for your plumbing company, Jeff, then you eating hot dogs, right. Isn't going to help you whacking your, hot dogs on a golf course isn't going to help. But if you're talking about your specific plumbing needs or your water needs, or the why specifically frequently asked questions of why does standing water smell? And that that's within your field, okay? So if I'm going to be brutal, fine, Jeff, whack your hot dogs, but you're gonna get the wrong audience. You're Wait, is, this a, is, is this a real client of yours? <laughs> <laughs> very specific. I'm, I'm searching right now on YouTube, <laughs> hitting hot dogs on a golf course. I'm seeing what comes up. There, there is, there is one client that, uh, that I, I subject to NDAs and stuff. I'll, I'll touch upon very carefully. Uh, but basically, it's a, it's a, uh, a fencing company that is does quite well now. Mm -hmm. And as long you can still be educational and funny. Okay, they were making content that was how to this and how to that, which was great, right? But then they made a video which was all about a specific building material, okay? 
And if you've seen the video, you probably even know what, what the video happens to be. A specific building material over time, and it's a nice time-lapse thing, and it's entertaining, it's this versus that, okay? Um, but it still was within their focus of them telling us how to put up that fence, how to build that fence, what specific materials to use. OK, and because that was still within their focus and entertaining, not only did it answer the questions of their clients needs, but that specific video went viral. OK, because it was interesting to not only their base, but generally people that's go, oh, what's what's that? That's weird. That's cool. OK, so if you're going to be scattershot, understand that being scattershot runs the risk of alienating your channel. It either won't take off because the YouTube algorithm doesn't know. So he does YouTube tutorials and eating contests and strokes hamsters. So the hamster video goes viral and it tries to put it in front of YouTube tutorial people and they're like, what? <laughs> Yeah. Where's the where's the Venn diagram for growing a YouTube channel and growing hamsters? I'm wondering. I'm wondering how big that is. Well, that's that's it. That's it. Or if, unless you've got some kind of animated host. But the the problem there happens to be, right? <laughs> that the, the, the virtual YouTubers are a thing. You never know. Uh, Furry yeah. virtual YouTuber YouTube educators. None of us. Let's be honest. None of us are there. Right. If anything, people are going the opposite way round. We've got, you know, we've got we've got Nick Nimmin, we've got Rob Wilson. There's a, a kind of hair motif going along that way, right? And there's D Nimmin, right? There's just this. So you never know. Virtual YouTube edu educators could be the next way to go. But um, the the problem has to be is that if you want to play into the YouTube algorithm, you need to lean into it. Now, if you want to be more scattershot, you need to understand that that will either hamper your growth or it will make a decision for you in the long run. And it, you, you've got a choice. You either steer into that choice and grow further or not grow into that. And in three, four months time, once that pump of traffic drops off, you've missed that rocket ship and you'll be going down to the baseline of YouTube trying to find videos for gerbil YouTubers and whatever it happens to be. OK, so I would say focus is the key. Truly think of one thing in your heart, the thing that you can't stop talking about. Right. The thing that you're going to have masks behind you during a, a YouTube live stream. Right. Of Marvel characters or stormtroopers or you, you, you get 500,000 subscribers and you just have to make a wrestling belt. Right. Something that you can't help but talk about for hours and hours and hours on end. That's your thing. There's someone out there that will listen to that. There's thousands of people out there that will listen to that because you're passionate about that thing. And if you're passionate about that thing, but not the four other things that are on your channel that you're only doing because, well, I heard me talking about drama helps grow my channel. You're not going to put the passion into it as much. Right. So either love it or understand where it needs to go. So if you're a business, the intent, what is your intent? What are you trying to get? Are you getting customers? Are you trying to prove that you're the expert? I've got 700 videos on my channel. I'm not there to sell a, a YouTube course. What I'm trying to do is help you grow a YouTube channel, maybe trust me and then ring me up. And that's how I make my money. Right. Or you use the affiliate links down below to install vidIQ at vidIQ.com forward slash Alan Spicer. Right. In which it's a fantastic SEO tool. You get more subscribers. You can maximize your ability to, to optimize your videos. You get daily video ideas that you can lean into. OK, your intent is what you're looking for. Grow your business or talk about your passion that you love. That's how you focus. That's how you'll grow a brand and grow your YouTube channel. Here comes the money or maybe not. <laughs> Let's talk about money on YouTube. Everybody dreams about YouTube millions, getting all of those views and all of that money, and num, 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 go spend it in villas in Marbella, or go and build a house, or just generally look after your family. So many people don't understand the hard work that's behind making money on YouTube, how long you have to build a foundation to get views, how you have to start qualifying for these kind of things. One, to start with, you need to actively be in the YouTube 
monetization program if you're not already pushing people to affiliate links, third party sites, consultations, online products that you may have already created. So I'll touch upon those shortly. But first, let's have a look at the YouTube monetization. You need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of accumulated watch time within a 12 month period. That 12 month period continues to roll. In other words, you need 240,000 minutes of watch time within 12 months. So if you imagine that your YouTube video is five minutes long and people on average watch about two minutes of that video, you now need 120,000 people to watch that video. Or you need a thousand videos and many, many minutes between those videos. So do you think you can go viral in one video? Probably not. It's more than likely that you're gonna to have to be making hundreds of videos to slowly accumulate that watch time. Secondly, CPM is important. Once you've finally been monetized and the YouTube gods have gone, yay, CPM can shoot you in the foot. CPM means cost per mil. In human terms, how much YouTube gets paid for every 1,000 views of your advertisements on your video. Notice the lots of caveats there. How much YouTube gets paid? YouTube will get paid, say, $10, and then they will take out their 35 to 40%, and they will give you, say, the $6 out of the 10. That's called RPM, revenue per mil. That's how much you truly get per thousand views of the advert. Let's step back there. Say you get 2,000 views on a video, you may only get 1,000 advertisements placed against it. And that 1,000 adverts out of 2,000 views, you get the $6 RPM. And the way that you can manipulate this CPM is by the niche that you happen to be in. If you're doing kids toys and vlogging, then there's loads of vloggers and the chances that you're going to have a lower CPM. One, two dollars ish. That's a CPM and then they'll take a cut. So you may even be getting around about 50 cents to a dollar per every thousand views on your video. Alternatively, on the other end of the scale, if you're doing something like finance, you could get a much higher CPM, 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars, which then means that your RPM happens to be a little higher. Six, seven, 10, 15, 20 dollars, per thousand advertised views. But money videos obviously pull in slightly less audience because they're not as bubblegum poppy as say how to make slime. So you have to juggle once again. Do you go for mainstream appeal and get more views and make slightly less money but at least you're getting the views in so then you can lean on other things that we're about to talk about like affiliate income? Or do you go for the higher end of the scale and hope that you stand out amongst financial services and that kind of thing and get a higher base CPM, but then it's not a wider appeal. You're not gonna have a, a toddler sat down watching you talk about 401ks, for example. Next, are you monetization friendly? You may be getting all the views, but are you talking about something that's a bit risky? You could quite easily talk about the news and get sensationalized views, but if you're being a little too adult in your content, then you won't get adverts at at all. If you're talking about graphic content, whether it's news, where it happens to be blood, guts, and gore, highly unlikely to get monetized. Are you talking about adult themes? Highly unlikely to get monetized. So the thing that I promised, affiliate links. Okay, so you may not have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. It's okay, you can still monetize your channel. Or if you're getting hundreds of thousands of views, but you are in the, the family friendly niche and you're at the lower end of the CPM, this is your way of catching up and making a little bit more money. If you're getting that amount of traffic and you're able to say in your videos, okay, well this Teddy I got from such and such shop and you can see a in the description down below, this is your way of them clicking on that link, going to buy that link, and you getting a small percentage of the sale of that teddy, that laptop, that camera. That's all helpful and certainly can help top up that CPM from a popular niche to almost match the financial services. But once again, the financial services niche, because it is so lucrative, they also have affiliate links that could also do well. For example, no doubt you've seen it on some channels where they link off to Webull and Private and Robinhood, where they'll get some kind of kickback or free shares and that kind of thing for every sign up that you get and they But that is certainly a way for you to accumulate money based on your YouTube channel. Alternatively, you can go down the route that I tend to find the most lucrative. I place my videos on here to prove that I can help people and then in the long run they reach out to me as a YouTube consultant and hope to work with me one-on-one -on -one. which by the way if you want to do there's a email address in the description down below or you can go to my about us page click on contact and then email me there you can get me one-on-one -on -one. these services tend to be much more 
tailored, much more specific, have direct implications on the creator, such as myself. If I was to go off and make my own course, for example, which I might do at some point in the future, or if I've got my own book to sell, that kind of thing, that has a direct monetary effect on that person. That way I don't have to share it with an affiliate company, I don't have to share 6040 with YouTube, you directly hire me for a service, or you directly buy my ebook or my book or my t-shirts, or it happens to be. Those services are the things that can make you the most money, and you can leverage YouTube traffic to push them somewhere to make that sale. Now there are many ways of making money on YouTube without being monetized. There is a video here, and if it's not here just yet, it is coming very soon. So hit subscribe, and I'll see you soon.